Uh, well, we head now over to Japan's election. It is coming up this Sunday. And the question is, will a possible shift in power also mean a shakeup for the Japanese stock market as well? We're putting that question uh, to well-known investor Mark Faber. He's editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom report. He comes to us via phone this morning uh, from Thailand. Good morning. Good evening to you, sir. Uh, it is thought that this will be a historic election in Japan uh, that the Liberal Democratic Party may be ousted from power. Will this have uh, investable outcomes for you? Well, I think that at the worst, the market isn't going to do anything. But uh, obviously, if any positive development occurs, then the market uh, could have quite a rally here for the simple reason that we're still very low in terms of share prices in Japan. Let's say we compare the Nikkei to the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is around 1,000, and in 1990 it was at 300. So we're up more than three times from the 1990 level. But Japan today, after having made a low last October at less than 7,000, we're now around 10,000. And in 1989, we were at 39,000. So I can say with some conviction that in Japan, we made a secular low last October, a secular low meaning that we won't make any new lows for a long time. Uh, now, when we are talking about uh, the new party that may be coming into power is anticipated to win the election, Democratic Party of Japan, the thought is that they may change their approach to ties within the Asian region and perhaps back away a little bit from the ties with the United States. Does that worry you or are you finding opportunities there? No, I think that in general, all countries in Asia will become more Asian-centric than uh, U.S.-centric for the simple reason that uh, Asia has now learned that you can't rely on exports to the U.S. for continuous growth and that Asia has to grow within itself. So I think that it's actually a positive that Japan and by the way, also Australia will gradually move away from being U.S.-centric to more Asian-centric. You're seeing that gravity shift towards Asia that we've heard uh, people talk about. When you look around the world right now, Mr. Faber, um, I know you've been critical of some of the central bank's actions to make efforts to rescue us out of this financial crisis. Uh, what are your thoughts about globally where we are in the state of recovery with particular tension here in the United States? Well, I think that uh, the global economy fell off a cliff between September 2008 and March 2009. And uh, through the fiscal packages and easy monetary policies, We've stabilized the global economy, but at the lower level than, say, the peak economic activity we had in 2006 and early 2007. So, yes, we stabilized the global economy. doesn't mean that any time soon we will see a resumption of strong growth. You said, sir, earlier this month, or have been credited as having said, that a total breakdown of the financial system is likely still ahead of us. Do you still believe that? Yes, but as I said uh, previously, it may only happen in five to ten years' time. But the problem I have with all the bailout packages and easy monetary policies is that the fundamental problems of the system have not been addressed. They have been postponed. And the policies that have, were implemented in this crisis were very similar to the policies implemented after 2001 when the Fed slashed interest rates to 1% on the Fed fund rate. Mm -hmm. And what it did, it, it created another bubble in housing. And now we don't know yet for sure where the bubble will be. It Thank could be in equities, it could be in commodities, it could be in any, anything. Thank you so much, Mark Faber of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report, live from Thailand.